Tusk is the second most picked hero right now in high level pubs. So I looked at 10 different high level tusks and this is how you should play to win as much as possible. Ok, minute zero, starting items. Tusk's pool of starting items is incredibly homogeneous, where the optimal items almost always are fairy fire, quelling blade, free tangos, a ward and 2 to 3 branches, usually 2. So, as always, chill a bit with the first skill point. As Tusk mid, you really only care about your first two skills, Q and W. Q is the most useful skill in lane, and 9 out of 10 games you'll want to start with it. That being said, if you have an opportunity to get first blood or more likely save a teammate, then it's possible to lane with one point in W as well. Before the lane starts, if you've gone for leveling Q, you have the option to stall the creeps by placing an ice wall. Personally, I usually don't think this is worth it, since you need to be a very experienced mid player to gain the entire benefit of it. During the laning stage, feel free to use Snowball and Ice Wall liberally. It costs a lot of mana, but if you use them to secure a range creep or multiple melee creeps and harass the enemy, it's incredibly worth it. At minute 1, you'll have begun the laning stage. If you're up against a melee mid, he has the ability to harass like a Lina, while being tanky like a Kunkka. If the enemy mid is a ranged hero, like Sniper or SF, he has insane kill potential on a similar level to Tiny. One thing that makes Tusk a good mid laner right now is that he is a pretty strong laner. And if you've played Dota for a while that might sound kinda weird, because he doesn't really have any good laning spells, but that's completely incorrect. His Q, again, is like a Lina's Dragon Slave. And that's the reason you want to go for Bottle, first item, always. You really want to get it as soon as possible. That's why almost all Tusks blow their mana completely on the early levels, because they are doing everything they can to get the Bottle before the 2 minute runes. Speaking of Bottle, since you're gonna need a lot of mana region, don't be afraid to trade with the enemy as well. You will need to regen up the mana with the bottle, so you might as well have an opportunity to regen up the health. Now as we're near 5 minutes, you're going to reach your first real power spike. Your walrus punch is decently strong. If you compare it to other ultimates like Lina's dragon slave or Kunkka's boat, it's not really that fancy or explosive. But the good part of it is that it has a very low cooldown, so you can actually harass with the ult, which is something I never thought I would say. If the lane is going well, you will probably get face boots around 5-7 minutes, and that is honestly the first point where you can gank the enemy. Of course, if you get a haste rune or an invis rune, feel free to do whatever you want, but it's only really profitable and consistent when you have face boots, since you can tip to a lane, get a kill and then face boots back, and it's not a huge loss for you personally. Don't forget that you can pick up the bounties as well on the way back. Now if you're playing high MMR pubs like Divine or Immortal, or in a 5 stack I guess, you can go for a more complicated strat where you completely give up mid for your position 4 to take and then you just go and gank the other lanes. I see it pretty often in the pro level pubs but I don't really think that I will be able to pull it off in my pubs, it just requires way too much communication. Now, the next item you want to get around the 10 minute mark is the Falcon Blade. And if you're anything like me, your first thought might be to just skip this item. It doesn't really have any cool actives, it doesn't really do that much at first glance. But it is honestly just the perfect item for Tusk. Some pros skip it in some games, but personally I'm going to get it every single game, no matter the draft or the situation. This item is simply made for Tusk mid. The health, the mana region, the damage are all kinda optimal for him. It gives him enough mana region to be uh, active in the mid game, and the damage and the health just makes him stronger. Now around the 10 minute mark, 11, 12, you know, the early mid game, Tusk can start to take part in more organized team fighting. Now here comes the first little quirk of Tusk mid. His spells are incredibly strong and they have short cooldown, but when you don't have your spells up you're pretty weak. In a lot of the fights you want to just burst your spells on the target and then walk back and then chill for a bit. And then do the same and do the same. Now you can do this in about 15 second intervals, 
which might sound like a long time, but in team fights, getting a huge pick off or setting up a huge kill is incredibly valuable. And having a 15 second delay on it is actually really, really short compared to most other heroes. You have to remember this is his ult, this is his snowball, this is his ice wall. And he has 15 seconds cooldown on his entire kit. Now, a couple of minutes later, you're going to start to think about getting Desolator. And this item is huge for Tusk. It genuinely allows you, almost all games, to either one-shot the mid or the supports. You can always one-shot the supports pretty much, but a lot of the games you can one-shot the mid as well. Think Invoker or Tinker or something like that. If your team is active and wants to fight, you should of course go with them. You are incredibly strong even before the Desolator. But listen, this is incredibly important. If your team is playing slow and they don't want to play with you, then you just need to go and farm your Desolator. You can't really one man play as Tusk before you get your Desolator. At least not if the enemy is coordinated. This is a mistake I've made so many times and I do replay analysis, I look at my games and I'm wondering why am I going without my team. So just keep that in mind, if your team wants to play passive, then you need to play a bit more passive as well. When you get your Desso, it's kind of where the fun begins, because you actually do so much damage with the tag team and Desso, it's pretty insane. You will most likely also be level 12. Which means that your ult is level 2 and you can do so much damage, it's insane. I think this is often an overlooked point in Tusk's game, because what, well, it's just a death zone. But it's actually so strong if you play with it when you have the timing. This is also most likely before any support starts to get defensive items. So you will most likely have an incredibly easy and free game at this point if you play with your Desso, just play a bit aggressively with your team. If your team is incredibly, incredibly passive and they don't join you when you ping your Desso and tell them to go fight and smoke, then you might need to stay back and be passive, but I don't think that is very good for your game. If you have the option to fight, this is the time to really capitalize on your strength. Now, assuming that you can play with your Desolator and your team and the game goes well, you will just naturally get a blink. You won't need to farm a lot for it, it will just kind of come eventually from a couple of kills and maybe a tower or two. And Blink Deso, in my opinion, is the final and the strongest power spike Tusk has. Because, at this point, it doesn't matter if the support has Glimmer Cape or if they have a Force Staff, or if they even have BKB in some cases. With your Walrus Punch and your Snowball, you have a 2.4 second stun. To add on top of that, you have a shit ton of damage as well. You might not solo kill anyone at this point, unless the game is going incredibly well. But the setup that you can give your team is so good. Because you stun them for 2.4 seconds, you take almost all of their HP, and you lock them in with an ice shard. It's just so hard to play against. To add on top of that, you also have a shit ton of damage, as I said earlier. Which means that if you have a 2.4 second stun, you will deal more than half their HP, maybe even kill a lot of the weaker heroes, and you have ice shard to trap them from running back. If you have any teammate nearby, that is almost always going to just secure a kill, guaranteed. There is basically no hero that can play around this, except maybe Tinker, but that's an exception. Now, it's hard to give a minute marker at this point, because the game varies a lot depending on how well you played the first 20 minutes, but somewhere around the mid-game, like between 20 and 30 minutes, you will start to get your BKB and form up your BKB. And I think this is kind of his last meaningful item, in my opinion. It's not a huge power spike or anything, but you probably want to start thinking about ending when you get this item. It's not a big deal if the game goes late. You lose a lot of the early edge that you have when the game goes late. And since every support is gonna have a shit ton of defensive items, you lose a lot of your ability to make plays for your team. What I'm trying to say is that if the game goes beyond like 4 to 5 minutes, then I think you've kinda already lost in my eyes. Sure, you will most likely still win a lot of the games after 45 minutes, but you don't really have the same control as you did early game. 
And again, this is purely my opinion, but yeah, that's my experience from looking at games and playing games myself. So how do you actually end with Tusk? Well, it's the same as with every other hero. You try to take Roche and then you go high ground with your hard carry. Some hard carries might be really, really shit at pushing. You can see like Riki for example. And that will make the game harder. But you still have a Desolator, you have some pushing ability. It's not great, but it's enough that you can most of the games kind of force a push with your team. But with that being said, that's pretty much all I wanted to go through today. I hope you enjoyed this little guide. If you have any questions or just want to start a discussion, just comment it down below. I will answer anything and try my best to discuss some things. I think that's one of the most important things to advance as a player. To get input and experiences from other players. And I want to improve as well. So yeah, with that being said, bye bye.